Okay, so this is going to be my playthrough of a Factorio um, free play in the sandbox mode. So uh, I'm just going to go through the different types of mods I have and for what reason. So if you ever want to play along with the same kind of mods, um, you can do that. I will be providing the map string so you could also get the same map as me if you'd like. Uh, the first one, Afraid of the Dark. It's so nighttime, it's easier to see, especially good for videos so you guys can see what I'm doing. Auto deconstruct is really good, so when something runs out like a drill, um, you can know to take it out so you don't waste your time just having drill sitting there doing nothing. Auto trash, it's better than the game's auto trash. It helps you keep your inventory clean. Um, Big Brother improves uh, radars, lets you see further of different things, and you can improve their efficiency and range through research. Bottleneck is super good in determining when um, things aren't optimized or things are lacking inputs or like say an inserter is turned around it'll tell you that the machine's not working. Crafting speed, this goes hand in hand with handy hands which is another mod I'll talk about in a second. It increases your, increases your crafting speed. Uh, Evo, Evo GUI, it just gives you some interesting stats in the top left corner. Faster robots, so when we do get to the robots they will move faster. Flow control, different types of pipes. Uh, foreman for all of our blueprinting needs. Farl to help lay rails because who wants to cut through so many trees to get to where you want to be. Handy hands, you can set things in your toolbar to automatically uh, craft items up to a certain stack number. Super great for when you're not crafting anything. It'll craft stuff for you to make sure you have it in your inventory as much as you like. Um, only if you have the materials for them, of course. Larger inventory, starting inventory is really bad, and I can't, I hate it, so I have a larger inventory. Long reach just makes my life a lot easier, so I have to walk next to things all the time. Longer underground belt, so the long underground belts get longer the further upgrades. Um, I think it's, the yellow belt's still the same. I think red is like 10, and I think blue is like 15 or something. We'll double check that when we get there. Orbital Ion Cannon, just late game thing. I really hate fighters. You'll see that in my generation settings that I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to basically build your base. And I don't like turning off fighters. I still like to have that threat, and I still like to have to defend my things. But um, it just makes it easier if you're trying to really build a mega base, which is pretty much the end game of this. It'll probably be a while before we get there, but it'll be fun. Uh, rail tanker. Rail tanker so it gives you a better way of transporting oil via train instead of barreling it up. RSO. I still don't like the resource generation in the base game. I think there's too many ore patches close together. So it really signal this really makes you have to work with trains. And I love working with the trains. Tree collision. Um, it just helps for walking through forests and there's still some forests where you can't get through but it makes the hitboxes on trees much smaller so you can walk through much easier and not get stuck all the time. Um, upgrade builder or upgrade planner automatically upgrades like belts or whatever you want as long as you have the materials with the bots or if you have the materials in your inventory and radar plus for RSO because the ores are so far away we need to make sure that radars can actually do something for you. All right. So now that we went through the mods, I'm going to go through my generation of what I'm going to use. Uh, water, I'm going to put to low, put size very, uh, just big. The reason being, I like a little bit of water in my game, especially in my starting area, but I like it to be big so when I do my mega backup uh, steam engines, I have a place to put them. And it also gives you a challenge to go around any large bodies of water with the trains. Since I'm using RSO, I'm not going to touch the iron ore or the copper ore, but what I will touch is the stone. I'm going to make the size big and the uh, riches very good because I like to use a landfill a lot and that requires a lot of stone and typically stone is just not all that frequent and so finding one that lasts any sort of time is very difficult. So I'm not going to change the frequency but I'll change how rich how much stone I can get out of them. Coal I'm going to remain the same. Crude oil is something I just don't like trying to find. So frequency I'll keep normal size I'm going to do big and very good for the richness again. 
and low biters. I hate walking through walls and walls and walls of biters. Starting area, very big. I uh, I like my beginning game to focus really on the logistics, laying out my base, and I don't, I don't have to worry about biters in the very beginning game. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and generate this. I may restart it a few times to get a starting area that I like, um, because I like a few of the ores closer together, because it really makes it um, a lot smoother when you don't have to walk around back and forth, back and forth through different ore piles, or make this huge long underground or uh, transport belts to your steam engines and such. You can just get it over with. So let's try to generate a few, and when I find one I like, we'll go with it. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, this isn't too bad. Small stone, but well, we got a decent iron and coal, copper, all right next to each other. This is a little far up. Let me see how far up that actually looks in the game. I don't know if it's actually all that far away. It might just be far enough away where it won't really impede what I'm trying to do. How big is it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think this will work. This this will definitely work. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Beginning game, you know, this is all pretty much the same. Mods or not, you want to craft yourself a uh, iron axe. So you can actually like mine some things. Unfortunately, my iron here is covered in trees, which is not very all that fun. But let's go ahead and get started smelting some of this ore. In the comments, if you ever want to know what shortcuts I'm using to do things, feel free to ask. I'll tell you in the next episode, or maybe not the next episode, because I'm going to do recording sessions and then post the episodes like every day or something overnight. Probably be about 30 minute videos, I'm guessing, for this series. My goal is just to use all the proper ratios, so I'm going to try to uh, figure out the math of each thing I'm building, walk you through it, and tell you why the perfect ratios. Uh, I'm going to try to use the circuit network as much as possible. I'm still not fluent in it, and I want to get better, and I'm going to be using this series to help myself get better with it. So let's go ahead and get some of this stuff. Oh, I don't want to get the wood out there. Okay. 17. I need stone. All right. So I want to make probably next two stone drills because you're going to need a lot of stone to get started with. I mean, the drills and the furnaces all require stone. So I'm going to try to make two stone drills. that requires 20. I could be wrong. It might just be five, uh, 5 for each instead of 10 for each. But let's find out. One. Yeah, it was only 5 for each. That's alright. I just need a few more of these to get myself a... I'm not going to waste my... Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, my, my, whatever that is, iron plates on a chest right now. It's early game, so iron's at a premium. Put that stuff in there. Oops, I wanted to keep one. So I can make a chest. Alright, so I got that going. So the stone's going to be working for me. Now I want two of these to get coal going so I can, ah, uh, let's get two more iron first. That'll speed up getting more more drills. So I'll put two more of these on here. And I'm going to need some more stone. This is where long reach comes in handy, so I have to walk back and forth all the time. So I'm going to need more trees to fuel everything. Alright, so now i got lots and lots of iron plates being smelted. The next two drills I'm going to use is going to be on the coal. One, two, perfect. This is really like the first step of automation in Factorial that you do. 
for any of my, the new players watching. You want to start with two drills on the coal because then both will feed each other and each drill acts as a chest for the other drill. So this drill here will feed this drill coal which will get it started and then this drill will feed this drill coal and then if you ever need coal you can grab from both of them to start fueling your items here. Oops. Okay. I like my FPS and UPS counter up there. Uh, it doesn't really start dropping off. I've actually never experienced it drop below 60 updates per second, ever. So I'm wondering if maybe this playthrough, I go long enough that I'll actually see that drop. I heard some mods actually affect it pretty significantly. Hopefully none of the mods I'm using do. I think the Evo GUI, these, um, this playtime and fighter evolution counter over here, has a significant impact on the performance. I've heard that from um, Arumba's and Stijo's playthrough and when they were playing a Factorissimo playthrough. I haven't experienced it yet, and me and my friend, when we play on our map, haven't seen any delays yet. But who's to say it won't happen? Uh, I'm going to get rid of this wood here. I'm going to keep some of it for power poles. Alright, I want at least one drill going on the copper for now because we want to get some power going. So let's smelt some of the copper. Because we're going to need copper to build a offshore pump. And that's what I need to get the power going. Oh, there's so many trees on this iron ore. Let's just go through this. You know what we're missing? We're missing the Factorio music in the background. Usually I don't play with it because I have my own music in the background, but since it's going to be a YouTube series, I don't need it getting flagged for copyright reasonings every video I post. So let's just turn on the Factorio sound here. I still don't hear anything. Well, here's my pickaxe. Wait, there it is. Okay. That's actually pretty loud, so I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. Let's go down to like there. Okay. Yeah, that's a little better. As long as you guys can still hear me over it, that's all that really matters. Alright, iron's all cleared off. I'm gonna go ahead and build one of these. And I like to start right away with the uh, 1 to 14 to 10. So, 5, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm going to need more iron. Oh, so I can try to walk you guys through that 1 to 14 to 10 ratio. I'm going to try. Um, so this offshore pump, it pumps at a certain rate. And I'm not exactly sure how fast it pumps. I might have to build it to really determine that. And, wow, they don't say how much these consume for the fluids. Do I have to place them to see how much they consume? Let me see. Let me go see if I have to place them to see how much this produces water-wise. Pump fluid from a body of water. Do I have to use a pipe to figure it out or a tank? Let's see. Hold on, I'm still crafting things. All right. Let's 
Let's see. So each of these, I think, hold 10 units. 10. And it filled 5 and about... Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to look that one up back for you. I know the ratio for this is 1 to 14 to 10. I guess sometimes you get away with 1 to 13. I've heard that a few times recently. Uh, I'm going to stick with the 1 to 14, though. That's the one I know. And let's see. Where am I going to build this? I think... I think right here's the play, because if I fill in all of this with my landfill, that would give me about... I don't know, 15 rows of steam. So I think right here I'm going to start. I'm going to start clearing out. I know I need two more engines. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of this. Create two more engines. Grab that. Grab some coal. Grab some stone. Fuel you up. Uh, everything else is fueled. Okay. So I got 10, 14, I'm going to make some underground pipes, I like that everything look nice. And start clearing out some more of these trees. I'm not going for any achievements in particular. Um, I might try to get a few. I'm definitely not going for, um, was it lazy, whatever, what is it called, let's see, achievements. I already got most of them, but I'm not going to go for... I might try Steam all the way. I've never done that, and it seems really interesting and a logistical challenge to keep everything fueled. So I haven't decided on that one yet. Uh, the lasers, I might go win the game without any laser turrets because my biters are set to low, so I think that won't be too difficult. I want to try to do it without logistic networks, but... That's asking a lot. Um, lazy bastard. Yeah, see, I already lost it. <laughs> I already crafted more than 111. So I'm definitely not going for that. I might go for this mass production three. Produce 20 million electronic circuits. Uh, I mean, I might get the steamrolled by accident. Or not the steamrolled, there's a train one. Oh, this one's time? You have to build a diesel locomotive within the first 90 minutes. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I like to leave a gap because it makes it easier to bring coal up if I need to, or really just for convenience so I can walk. I don't like having this huge line of things I can't walk past. I sometimes like starting in the desert. Uh, more often than not, I find myself actually liking to work in the forest. I get all this wood, and I just... A lot of people don't like it in their inventories, but I just find a circuit network way of burning it for power. And then in the desert, I hate having to look for the wood to um, build power poles in the beginning. Because then you have to walk away super far, because it's long... Long reach doesn't even help you, uh, help you with that. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Should I do another gap or just do f straight out? What looks better? If I just go, nah, I'll just go straight out. I don't need another gap. So again, this is going to be 30 minute episodes I'm going to plan for. So today's all right, 19 minutes. So we got a little bit more time. I was thinking originally doing hour episodes, but I think it's much easier to find time to sit down and watch a 30 minute episode rather than an hour. Um, some people really like hour episodes. Like when I'm watching something, I'm really into it. I'd like an hour episode, but then if I'm waking up in the morning or at work, I find some downtime 
during one of my prep periods. Um, I find it much easier to watch a 20 or 30 minute video than I do watching a hour long video. Because if I watch an hour long video, I end up just having to stop and restart. All right, so we got our first steam engine chain going on here. I'm just trying to clear these trees out because I know there's going to be a conveyor belt right here with burner inserters. So I'm just thinking ahead of time. Oh, I might actually add uh, auto research for the next episode or next streaming session because I hate mid-game where everything gets researched in like two seconds and you have to choose new research every two seconds. Really annoying. I'm gonna need one lab. I'm gonna need ten potions. And I'm gonna need a couple of these. But I'm gonna do the potions after the poles. So those and then potions. Okay. Let me clear off this ore patch. See, the only thing I don't like about this generation setting is the copper being so close to the coal. You have to be a little more careful with where you place the miners. I mean, it's all right, but it's a little annoying. Okay. Gonna need a power pole, we're gonna need a lab, and get that automation going. Burn up that wood. Oh. Duh. Gotta connect up all the steam engines. Okay, so I want to get the power automated first. So 14 burner inserters, and I usually like to start with two electric mining drills. That's usually enough to keep it powered for early game. And I'm going to turn on my handy hands. So this is what's really cool. If you lock it in your toolbar with the middle mouse button, and then you hold it in <coughs> in your hand, and you hit I or K, I bringing up, K bringing it down, it tells you 0.25 stacks, no, I want one full stack. So I have 50 poles on me all the time, and when I'm not crafting anything, it'll start crafting them for me. And then it only does one at a time, so you can craft other things while it's doing its work. And I want couple of these. So see, I crafted those, Stop those ones, crafts my belts first. I'm going to lock that in there and choose one, two stacks for those. So I want a hundred of those all times. So I don't feel like any hands is cheating because it's just doing something that you could do anyways. What do I want next? Probably logistics. Crafting speed's not terrible, but yeah, logistics. A lot of stone. Alright, got my miners here. It's a little farther away than I like to start with, but it's okay. Thank you. 
I really wish OBS had a noise gate. I don't think it does. I think the old version did, but I don't think this version has noise gate. So I apologize if you hear anything in the background. I have a push to mute, so if like, so I won't be coughing in your ears, but sometimes you can hear a bird scream and it gets old quick. Really? That was a couple short. Okay. Power is automated. Uh, I like to use burner inserters instead of regular inserters because um, mm -hmm. it's less of a chance of getting a blackout. So if your power starts to go low, normal inserters start to work slower. And if they start to work slower, power can't keep up as easy, and it leads quicker to a blackout than using burner inserters. I realize I'm using electric drills anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I think it's less of an issue. I, it could just be, you know, my feelings about it couldn't actually be, might not actually be true. Uh, who knows? All right, anyways, let's get started on making our smelting columns. Now with our smelting columns, we gotta determine where we wanna go with them. So taking a look at our map, it looks like the only water we see right now is here. And do uh, the question is, do I want a horizontal bus? That's what I normally do, or a vertical bus. Looks like there's a lot of trees down here, not so many over here. So I might put my smelting furnaces. Oh, there's the oil though. Well, I'll put them here, and then I'll work my bus towards the right. That's typically what I do. So I'm going to make one of these, make handy hands, make sure I have 50. Yeah, 50. Because we're going to build a lot. I always build a lot. I always go big. Go big or go home. Um. And I'm going to build actually over to the right a little bit because I like to start with a copper line on the top and an iron line on the bottom. And then whenever I need any, I can just build my copper up and build my iron down. Keeps everything nice and organized. And it looks like this is a nice open area, so I think I'm going to start here. Okay. Um, do I want to plan for the future? Probably. Probably. That's probably the play. Hmm. If I... I'm trying to think how I want to set this up. Because those are normally three wide, right? So if I just take that out, I can place it. Hmm. I think what I need to do is this. Because then it's three wide, three wide, I can play, replace them with both. I think that's what I want to do. Mm. Oh no, I remember now. This is an older design I haven't used in a while. It goes in the back, in the front, after the belt. Um. No, because, well, okay, inserter, belt, belt, because I've been liking, lately I've been liking the raw materials to go in the middle, and then the processed materials to go on the outside. I suppose it doesn't really matter. You know what, I'm going to use my old design, I haven't used it in a while. I'm going to put the, that, like that. this here, here, and here. Because now, 
We... Did, did we do this wrong? Because I want two fulls. It's easier to upgrade that way. So I can't have him there. It has to be there. Because if it's like this, then it's still easily upgradable, right? Because that becomes that space. That can go to that space. Yeah. And then we can have a regular inserter and a longhand inserter and a regular inserter putting up. Okay. Well, we hit that 30 minute mark. So this will conclude episode one. Um, episode two will finish this smelting uh, row for copper and iron and then whatever else comes after. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.